Speaking of which, those are some stylish sunglasses. I just love women who look great in sunglasses, such cool beauties. Is that so? Why don't we get out of this stuffy place and go on a date? Ouch. Let go of me, please. Come on, you'd rather have an assertive man, right? Lucas grips tighter. Stop it. Get away from her. Before I knew it, I was already moving. Hello? What's up, mom, calling all of a sudden? It's been almost a month since you started living on your own, right? Just checking to see if you're managing okay. You're too protective. I'm handling things just fine. Any problems with your co-workers? No worries. I mean, sorry. What's wrong? I almost lied just now. Actually, things are a bit tough. Is work getting to you? It's not the work itself, it's the people. Is someone messing with you about your looks? Well, that's been a thing since I was a kid, so I'm used to it. You shouldn't have to get used to it. You're not doing anything wrong. Thanks for your concern, but I'm okay. Really? Remember, you can tell me anything anytime. You're too protective. I'm really fine. I have to go. I've got something to take care of. Okay, take care and stay strong. After hanging up, I let out a big sigh. I put on a brave face again. To be honest, I don't want to go to work. I stare blankly at my reflection in the mirror, trying to force a smile. It only distorts my face. I've never been good at forming expressions, not just smiling. I suffer from what's known as facial paralysis. It's been an issue since I was little, and it has caused me a lot of pain. I was laughed at and avoided by classmates for being creepy. Mom always tried to protect me, but it pained her too. That's why I pretended to be okay during our call earlier. I'm sorry for being born this way. I muttered to the mirror and felt overwhelmingly sad. As I got older, people commented less on my face. But at my current job, there's one person who keeps mocking me relentlessly. Brandon, you haven't closed any deals this month, have you? Lucas. I apologize. Even your apology looks creepy. That's why you can't close deals or get girls. Apparently in Lucas's dictionary, the word consideration does not exist. Whether I attract women or not is irrelevant. Hey, don't get all defensive just because I hit a nerve. Lucas, as detestable as his personality may be, was blessed with good looks. He must have been very popular from his school days. He graduated from a prestigious university, well known to everyone. But you know, I think even someone like you has value, so don't worry. What do you mean by that? Being at the bottom of the barrel, unable to work properly because of your twisted face, it makes others feel a bit better about themselves. Doesn't it? I don't find that comforting at all. Come on, I'm complimenting you. It's not just your face that's twisted, but your personality too. Every day, he would say things like this in front of other employees. It had been years since I was openly berated like this. Have you ever been in a relationship before? What? Just answer me. You haven't, right? There's no way you could have. Lucas asks with a smirk. Knowing full well already. No, I haven't. Bingo. I knew it. That quiz was too easy. Excuse me, I need to get back to work. On the gloomy way home, I kept thinking about Lucas's words. Romance, ha. Huh? I've never had a girlfriend. I feel it's presumptuous of someone like me to even have feelings for someone else. But there was once a girl I had feelings for. Her name was Amber, a classmate from high school. Hey Brandon, can I eat lunch with you? Uh. Oh, yeah. In high school, my facial paralysis caused me to be isolated. I usually ate lunch alone in a corner of the classroom. That's when she suddenly came over to me. Why would you want to eat with someone like me? What? Because I only get to see your true face when you're eating lunch. Well, I usually wear a mask, so... Yes, it's a rare opportunity, so we have to make the most of it. You should probably stop, you know? What? Why? I can't make facial expressions properly because of my paralysis. I know that. So what? Everyone else finds it creepy, 
and you might get avoided too. What? Why should I care about people who would avoid me for that? Amber looked genuinely puzzled, as if what she said was the most natural thing in the world. I'd never met anyone like her before. I decide who I want to talk to, so it's fine. She said that and showed me a bright smile. It was hard to push away someone who reached out to me like that. At first, I was reluctant, but gradually, I opened up to her. Hey Brandon. Let's go home together. Okay. Before I knew it, I had fallen into Amber's rhythm and was surprised at how close we had become. Initially, I suspected she had an ulterior motive, but her purity made such thoughts feel shameful. My mom and I had a fight last night. Do you ever fight with your parents? Not really. I think we get along pretty well. You're so lucky. I don't want to fight, but why are parents so stubborn? I guess it depends on the person. Hey, that's not fair. Amber said, laughing as she playfully hit me on the back. I couldn't pinpoint the moment it happened. By the time I realized it, I had fallen in love with Amber. But it would be a bother if someone like me confessed, wouldn't it? Lying on my bed, I stared at the ceiling and muttered to myself. Even if it went well and we started dating, others would probably point fingers at us. I couldn't help but think about things that probably shouldn't matter. I should be satisfied just being friends with her. I've decided not to confess my feelings. Convinced that remaining friends was the best for both me and Amber, I settled on that. Our friendship was good, and we often hung out after school. One day, on our way home, Amber suddenly looked serious. Hey, Brandon. What's wrong? There's a secret I've kept from you for a long time. Everyone has secrets, don't they? That's true, but... I wanted to tell you. I'll listen if you want to tell me, what is it? Well, actually... Amber paused there, falling silent. Feeling it wasn't right to rush her, I patiently waited. I'm sick. Sick? With what? Little by little, I'm losing my sight. What? It's really scary. Is that true? Even as I asked, Amber didn't respond to the question. Instead, she continued. Today, I see less than yesterday. Is that some kind of metaphor? No, my vision is progressively getting worse. Maybe by tomorrow, I won't be able to see anything at all. That's, how can I? I didn't know what to say. Saying, it's going to be okay, felt wrong. Blaming her for not telling me sooner also seemed absurd. Not knowing the right thing to do, I looked down. Just kidding. What? There's no way that's true. It's a joke, obviously. A joke? A girl like me, always so cheerful, turns serious and you believe it? It's like a prank. I see. Though Amber said it was a joke, I realized that the illness was real. She would never make a joke that could upset someone. She must have sensed my distress and turned it into a joke. I should have said something clever, but I didn't have it in me. This would remain a regret in my mind. Yet, Amber's cheerful nature managed to turn my complex about facial paralysis into something positive. Because I can't properly make expressions, misunderstandings are an everyday occurrence for me. What? I think it makes you look intelligent, like you're cool, which is really attractive. I've never been told that before. It doesn't matter what others think. It's what I think that matters. Amber said confidently. Looking at her face, I felt like everything was going to be all right. It's strange. What is? I think if anyone else had said that to me, it wouldn't have resonated at all. Really? Why? I might have even gotten angry. I might have said, you don't understand my struggles, don't make such carefree and insensitive comments. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. There's no need for you to apologize. Really? Actually, I feel energized by you, and thanks to you, I've definitely become more positive. I'm glad to hear that, but... Well, it might be hard to tell from just my expressions, since I have facial paralysis. That's not true. I understand you much better than any other classmate, at least I think I do. Thank you. I wish I could make it more obvious. It's not certain that this condition will continue forever. Then, there's something to look forward to the day you can laugh without holding back. 
Amber smiled brightly. I want to smile like that too. That's a beautiful way to look at it, seeing it as something to look forward to. By the way, that anticipation isn't just for you. What do you mean? Seeing you smile wholeheartedly is something I'm looking forward to as well. I was taken aback. Would anyone who thinks of me this way ever appear in my life again? It might sound exaggerated, but I seriously thought so. This encouragement from Amber has always supported me. I'm really glad to have met someone who speaks to me like that. Don't be silly. Don't say such exaggerated things. It's not an exaggeration. When I talk to you, I truly feel like everything will be okay. Do I have some kind of magical power? Obviously. In contrast to Amber's playful attitude, I answered seriously. Even though I may not have the courage to confess, I want to continue sharing laughs and joy like this. Holding this modest wish close to my heart, I continued my school life. However, these days came to an abrupt end. Brandon, I have something important to tell you. During a break one day, Amber spoke to me with a serious look. What's up? I'm going to announce it to everyone in class tomorrow, but I thought I should tell you first. What is it? I'm moving. So, I'll be transferring to another school. What? Why all of a sudden? It's because of my dad's job. He's been really busy lately. That's tough. I knew the best thing to do was to send her off with a smile. I understood that in my head, but still. Don't look so sad. It makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. No, sorry. I don't blame you at all. I know. You're kind. Not really. Yes, you are. I've received a lot of energy and courage from you. From me? Really? Honestly, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was the only one receiving anything. Me, giving courage to Amber? Me, who is usually avoided and seen as creepy by others. Ha! Huh? Brandon? What's wrong? What do you mean? You're crying. What? Oh. That's strange. Why is that happening? It must be because you're sad about us parting ways. That makes me happy. Of course, that was part of it. But these tears weren't just about that. I was happy to know that I had been able to give something to Amber. All these mixed feelings came out as tears. Amber, take care. I'll also keep trying to stay strong. Thank you. I won't forget you, Brandon. Amber said this and gripped my hand firmly. Her eyes seemed to shimmer with tears. Thus, my first love ended without ever being fulfilled. On my way home from work, I reminisced about those days. The promise I made with Amber to stay strong. Am I really keeping it? Honestly, I'm not sure. If I keep moping around, she'd probably laugh at me. I loved Amber's smile, but the smile I wanted to see wasn't one made to cheer me up. I wanted to be in a relationship where we could truly laugh together from the bottom of our hearts. All right. I'll try harder from tomorrow. I lifted my head, encouraging myself. Even in my memories, Amber always managed to make me more positive. I wonder how she's doing now. I haven't seen Amber since then. I hope to meet her again someday and finally express my feelings. A few weeks later, I went on a sales visit with my boss, Lucas. The president of the client company, Mr. Johnson, likes me a lot and always treated me kindly. By the way, Brandon. This isn't related to work, but may I ask you something? What is it? You know I have a daughter about your age, don't you? Of course. I've seen her picture, she's very beautiful. How about it? Would you consider marrying her? What? I was taken aback by the unexpected suggestion. She's precious to me, but I think I could entrust her to someone like you. Well, I'm not sure. It's not a bad idea, I think. When the arranged marriage was mentioned, Amber's face popped into my mind. She's been in my heart unchanged since high school. I don't really expect a miraculous reunion that leads to marriage. But I can't imagine being with someone else while Amber is still in my heart. I appreciate the sentiment, but... Brandon! Wait a minute! I'm not letting you decline. What? There's no one better than you. 
I often tell my daughter about you. How you're a quiet, serious young man who's competent at his job. No, no, that's not true at all. Please. Just meet her once, that's all I'm asking. Are you sure I'm the right choice? It has to be you. Don't underestimate yourself like that. Being put on the spot like this, and considering he's a client, it was hard to say no. All right. I will meet her once. Oh. Really? Thank you. I'm sure my daughter will be thrilled. I hope so. Be more confident. Right, Lucas? Lucas, who had been listening to our exchange, clearly looked displeased. Well, I'm not sure what to think. Why the long face? Aren't you happy for your subordinate? Despite Mr. Johnson's energetic reassurance, Lucas's expression remained unaltered. So, Brandon. I'll contact you again with the details. I'm counting on you. Understood. Thank you for arranging this. Ha! Huh. I might be the most excited of all. I'm really looking forward to this. The difference in enthusiasm between Mr. Johnson and me could not be more stark. It was nice to be valued not just as a worker, but as a person. But still. Is it really okay to go to this arranged meeting with such half-hearted feelings? What would Amber do in this situation? On my way home, I muttered to myself, alone. Not that she would answer. Actually, it would be scary if she did. I joked to myself as I trudged along. But maybe, this was a sign to stop dwelling on Amber. I considered that possibility. Mr. Johnson was quick to act and he called me the next day. Brandon. It's set for Saturday the week after next. Are you free? This is about the matchmaking meeting, not work, right? Of course. I arranged everything right after you guys left. Thank you. Saturday the week after next works for me. Good, good. Even if it doesn't work out, I'll keep setting it up until it does. I didn't know what Mr. Johnson's daughter would think of me. Yet, I wanted to respond to his enthusiasm. Mr. Johnson would give me the time and place later. I wrote down these details in a notepad nearby. I never imagined myself in an arranged marriage. While I'm not averse to marriage, it always felt like something distant. This day doesn't necessarily mean I'll get married. The night before, I couldn't sleep, thinking about various things. No matter what I thought about, Amber's face would appear. I wish I could see her. What am I saying on the night before the matchmaking meeting? I was almost disgusted with myself. And then the morning of the meeting arrived. As I headed to the restaurant Mr. Johnson had told me about, Lucas called. Hey Brandon. About today's meeting, there's been a change in the venue. Really? Mr. Johnson called me and told me to go to the place I'm about to mention, Lucas said. Wait a moment. Why did Mr. Johnson contact you instead of me? There are various reasons. Mr. Johnson is also busy, so it can't be helped, he replied. I'm not sure if that's the issue here. He apologized for the sudden change. I'll send you the details of the store, Lucas continued. All right. Thank you very much, I said. Despite my confusion, I headed to the store that Lucas had mentioned. However, there was no sign of my supposed date, and there wasn't even a reservation made. Could it be that he lied to set me up? Given Lucas's usual hostility towards me, it's not an implausible scenario. He probably doesn't like the fact that Mr. Johnson favors me. I need to hurry. I rushed back to the original meeting place. Ultimately, I arrived significantly later than the scheduled time. There I found Mr. Johnson's daughter and Lucas together. Mr. Johnson's daughter was wearing sunglasses, making it hard to read her expression. However, it was obvious she was beautiful. Wow, I didn't expect Mr. Johnson's daughter to be this gorgeous, he remarked. And where is Brandon? I am Brandon. More importantly, what do you think of me? I don't look bad, right? I'd even say I'm quite handsome, he said. Lucas was completely wooing my date. So this was why he had lied. By the way, those are stylish sunglasses. I have a thing for cool beauties who look good in sunglasses. Is that so? Why don't we leave this stiff place and go out on a date? 
Lucas suggested, grabbing Mr. Johnson's daughter's arm. Ouch. Please let go, she protested. Come on, you like assertive men, don't you? Stop it. Get away from her. Without thinking, I acted to protect her. I freed her from Lucas's grip and protected her. What are you doing here? Why did you come? I'm here for a date. But more importantly, you set me up, didn't you? What? What are you talking about? I'm Brandon, he claimed. Are you still going on about that? You were interrupting us just as things were getting good. Who are you? He still insisted on being Brandon. How far will he go with his deceit? I am Brandon. You are Lucas. What are you talking about? I'm Brandon. Stop making things up, he replied. Perhaps he thought he could fool her since it was their first meeting. Just then, a waiter from the back of the restaurant came forward. He then told Mr. Johnson's daughter. The person who just protected you is Brandon. What? Who are you? It's none of your business. Lucas protested. Outsider? I'm an acquaintance of Brandon, so I just told you what I know, the waiter explained. What? Brandon is a regular here, he added. Although Mr. Johnson, our client, made the reservation, I frequented this place often. The waiter, sensing the situation, offered his help. Mr. Johnson's daughter turned to Lucas and spoke. Did you try to deceive me? No, I mean, it's just that. Lucas turned pale. This man is Lucas. He's my boss at the company, I explained. So, he's connected to my father. I'll report everything, she declared. What? Wait a minute. He probably thought it as a prank. Lucas suddenly started to panic. If this gets out, it's definitely going to be bad. You brought this upon yourself. Honestly, I'm surprised you thought you could get away with such a poorly thought out plan, I said. I have a request for the two of you. Please don't report this to Mr. Johnson. No, I refused. I decline as well, she added. No way. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I apologize, Lucas pleaded. Please keep your voice down inside the restaurant as it disturbs other customers, the waiter interjected. Shut up. That's the least of my worries right now. I will not forgive you, so please leave immediately, she insisted. Lucas, right? You weren't really supposed to be here, were you? No, I mean, yes. I'm sorry. Lucas left the restaurant with his head down. Finally, the troublemaker was gone. So, you're Brandon, right? What? I recognized your voice immediately. Don't you remember me, Brandon? Could it be? Amber? She looked so different, I hadn't recognized her. I had assumed it was just a coincidence that she had the same last name as our client, Mr. Johnson. What are the odds? It's like a dream to meet you like this after so long. It's been a while, she said. Amber, those sunglasses, can you no longer see? Yes. I can't see at all, she replied. I see. Unsure of what to say after such a long time, I was at a loss for words. Amber had become so beautiful, almost unrecognizable compared to our high school days. Suddenly reunited, I was overwhelmed with various emotions. It might not be the right time to say this, given it's our first meeting in a while, but... What is it? I've always liked you since high school. No, I still like you just as much. I finally confessed. Even without hearing her response, a sense of relief washed over me. It felt as if a blockage had been cleared. Even if you can't see, I'll be your eyes. That's why I want us to be together. Strangely, I felt no embarrassment. Because I meant every word of it. I'm happy. Thank you, Brandon. Amber said, tears streaming down her face. You know, it's true I've lost my sight, but that's made other things more visible, she added. What? I can see the purity of your heart more clearly now. I knew it since high school, she revealed. Amber. I've liked you since high school too. Please, let's be together. Really? Yes. I couldn't help but jump for joy. 
the familiar waiters led the applause. Who would believe such a miraculous turn of events? Thus, Amber and I began dating. Later, thanks to our report, Lucas's scheme was exposed to Mr. Johnson. You dared to interfere with my daughter and Brandon's meeting. Ah. I'm so sorry. I will never forgive you. I'll also report this to your company, so be prepared, Mr. Johnson threatened. Mr. Johnson. Please have mercy. Not a chance. Don't ever show your face to me again. The recent chaos triggered a series of problems for Lucas. It came to light that he had often made fun of my facial paralysis. As a result, he was fired from the company. Lucas tearfully left the company. Afterward, he moved from job to job, but his high pride led to repeated conflicts with his bosses, resulting in him being fired again and again. Now, he apparently lives in a rundown apartment, depleting his savings and subsisting primarily on a diet of cabbage. Why has it come to this? Brandon is happy, and yet, why this disparity? Tearfully, he stuffed his mouth with the tasteless cabbage soup. Though it's his own fault, I hope he finds a way to reform. Amber and I continued to date smoothly, visiting various places together. We made more memories, filling the gap from the time we had been apart. On our second year of dating, I decided to propose. If you're okay with someone like me, please stay with me forever. Surrounded by many well-wishers, we got married. Happiness was at its peak with the birth of our child. During our first family photo session, I noticed something. Hey, this picture. What's up? I'm smiling so widely. I've never seen myself smile like this before. That's wonderful. I wish you could see it. I can't see it, but I somehow understand. Amber said, squeezing my hand. This photo of our happiest smiles remains displayed in our entryway. Every day before work, I gaze at this photo and savor our happiness. Have a good day. Work hard. Thank you. I'll do my best today. With a positive attitude, I opened the door. Having a family gave me the strength to keep striving no matter what. That's how I felt.